Today I want to talk about the unspoken eating disorder. I want to talk about the last insult that no one wants to talk about. There's a lot of stuff in the social media recently about body acceptance, about loving your body despite the size, and all this is geared towards people who are overweight. And a lot of people say that um, the insults of being fat, of being obese, of this sort of bigger body image, uh, it's the last uh, insult that's actually accepted by society or it's actually all these other insults aren't okay. We don't call, we don't talk about someone's race or their religion, but it's okay to say that they're fat, you know? And I want to challenge that. I want to say that the last insult that uh, is accepted by society is this idea of skinny. Being skinny is, in our society, considered good. It's considered a compliment. It's considered something to be desired. But oftentimes, people aren't looking at it from a male point of view. From... Now let's take a step back. From a female point of view, being skinny is great, being overweight is bad. But from a male point of view, it's just the opposite. Guys don't want to be told that they're skinny. Guys don't want to be skinny. That's the body type that they don't want. But because society actually deems that to be beneficial, looking at it from beneficial from a female standpoint, that oftentimes it gets unrecognized as a politically and socially acceptable insult. The, you know, maybe you, you don't want to be called skinny. Maybe you don't like to be skinny. Maybe you're sick and tired of it and you, you know, because there's a lot in society and media telling guys that they have to look a certain way too. And I'm not trying to take the focus off of women. Because often they get the brunt of it. We know, arguably, that women definitely get the brunt of body image issues. But I don't think that we should, for one second, ignore another real issue. And that is the insults and the body image issues that men have. And I'm not talking about just overweight men. I'm talking about skinny guys trying to get big. And that is the beginning of my story because, you know, I was born premature. I came out two pounds, some ounces, you know, I came out three months early. So I was way behind the eight ball from the beginning and I was just skinny my whole life. And I just ate and ate and ate and ate whatever the heck I wanted and couldn't gain a freaking pound. Like... It's frustrating for, for people who want to lose weight that they eat one brownie and they put on five towns, you know? Well, it's frustrating for a guy who's eating four to 5,000 calories a day and can't freaking put on a pound, you know? That sucks too. I, I guess it's a little bit better because at least I don't have to starve myself. But binge eating isn't healthy either. And that's essentially what all of these comments led into was this, I need to get big, I need to put on muscle, I need to go to the gym. And I think that's actually what makes this sort of skinny insole body image issue very dangerous because people often don't recognize it. People don't admit it, it's not recognized. And so you go to the gym and you get addicted to the gym, which again is another good thing. And so there's a lot of these symptoms of a bad eating disorder that are actually considered good. Um, and so when you get told you're skinny uh, a, a million times in a million different ways by a million people, it eats away at you. And so subconsciously my body, I was looking for a way to uh, become bigger than my problems, to overcome my fears, to overcome the lack of love in my life. To, In order to conquer my demons, I had to physically become bigger than them. 
And that led into an obsession with the gym and with lifting weights and an obsession with eating that lasted almost 10 years. And at no point did anybody, including myself, ever think that it was a bad thing. Um, and every time I got called skinny, it just made it worse and worse and worse. When you learn about these triggers and about these eating disorder behaviors and about these other environmental cues that you hear from people with anorexia or bulimia, it's the same thing with this. I don't know what you would call it because the issue is here, it's actually more like binge eating except uh, you're doing it to put on weight. You're not overweight and you're binge eating. So it doesn't have that physiological, that physical component to it. So I don't know if it's still considered a, 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 a binge, I guess it's still considered binge eating, but it just doesn't have the physical manifestation. And, uh, and for 10 years, I tried to physically become bigger than my problems, bigger than the insults, bigger than the people around me so that I could overcome the negativity in my life. And I don't know if I ever sort of recognized this as being a really emotional, psychological issue. That this was not okay, and I think that's what made it so dangerous, is that every moment of it was okay. Because every other guy around me was trying to put on weight and get big too. And... I... The most amazing uh, thing happened to me. I uh, I and there I was in a relationship at the time that ended, and that made me realize that it didn't matter what I looked like or how big I was or what my muscles were or how much I could lift at the gym. None of that physical manifestation meant anything to me if I couldn't be with the person I loved. And that gave me a new perspective on all of it. When I realized that when I'm all alone, uh, at the end of the day, I have to live with me. I have to live with myself. And if doing all these things isn't helping me, it's not changing how people view me. And it didn't make how I viewed myself any better. And I realized in this dark moment that the only thing left was for me to love myself. I remember in the I was at work and I was staring in my in, at myself in the mirror, and I was just like, "Why am I doing my doing this to myself? I just gotta love myself. That's all there is to it. You just gotta love yourself." I made a commitment to myself in that moment that I couldn't do anything for anybody else. I had to do it for me. And I wasn't doing any of this for me. For real me. I was doing this out of fear. Fear of not being loved. Fear of being rejected. Fear of not being able to overcome my problems. Fear of the resentment from other people commenting on the way I look. And uh, I decided in that moment that I was going to do whatever it took to nurture myself. And so I stopped going to the gym and I started running. And I stopped binge eating and I started drinking green juice. 
and I lost weight so quickly. I lost 30 pounds in three months. Because that's what happens when you start doing high intensity interval training. You're burning a ton of calories and you stop binge eating. It's the weight just came off. And that was probably the biggest shocker for me. It was like the rug of my life was pulled out from under me. It was like I was free falling with nothing to hold on to. Because everything that I built my life around, everything that I knew, was gone. My security blanket, the gym, my food, my habits, my lifestyle, gone in an instant. I made that mental commitment to break my bond with that old me, but there was no new me to hold on to, to become. I just had nothing. And so I sat there in my own head for months and months while I reconstructed the new definition of me, who I am and what I want, what's important to me, what my values are, who am I to become? What are my goals? And how will I love myself in the end of this? And so I had no identity. I had nothing. And I had to reform my identity. And that was probably one of the most eye-opening experiences of my life. I lost that job. Uh, the job went out of business. Day in and day out, during my last weeks there, I spent running during my lunch breaks and running during after work and before work. And in my head, I just sat in my head, toiling over everything, and getting rid of the old and starting new again, and hashing through old emotions and relinquishing those that didn't serve me anymore. 